Happy Halloween part two. I'm here with my guest host, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And Teresita's in the background. If you hear laughing, I don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> yeah, she's just watching. Okay, so we're on creepypasta.org this time. I really don't know what the difference is between .com and .org. I assume .org is more official because, like, org, but, like, I think it's easier to find more interesting pastas okay. on the dot org because you can like search it this is the one i was telling teresita about because like it was easier when i was doing it last year because like we could see the rating we could see the length we could like sort by rating so we were sure to get bad ones mm -hmm. um i have different ratings we have one that's 2.67 uh this is out of five dot com is out of 10 okay still not good we read a 9.2 out of 10 yesterday and it sucked okay <laughs> Um, so we have a 4.49, which is pretty high for Creepypasta, and 3.78. Okay. Okay. First one we're going to read is called An Odd Occurrence at the Train Tracks. Okay. It's a tiny one, submitted on 8th December 2014 by Flaky Porcupine. <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Edwin was widely considered to be one of the better actors of his time. Some even called him the best overall. Mm. With a healthy theatrical love for Shakespeare plays. Okay. I have a love for Shakespeare plays. It's not healthy. No one I know with a love for Shakespeare it healthily loves Shakespeare. Is either you're all in or you're out. That's very true. Loki of said like it's a whole year of Shakespeare for me. No one else needs to know that, but like there's a fun fact. Okay. With a healthy theatrical love for Shakespeare plays, he found any chance he could to get involved in one. A con a contestant among critics to be the finest Hamlet that there ever was and ever will be. Wow. Mm. After being selected out of a few other popular performers for a role, as well as to visit his sister, he eagerly awaited at the train station. It was loud and populated with people, the air being filled with the noise and chatter among the others there. The day was chilly and filled with rainfall, making the station having an almost white noise sound around it. When the train finally arrived, the crowd was all too anxious to get on the train and hurtled towards it, pushing a young college student near the edge of the platform. That is a fear I have! <laughs> When I'm waiting for the underground train to come, and, like, it gets real crowded sometimes, yeah. and I'm, like, trying to stay behind the yellow line to mind the gap between the platform and the train. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to be safe and everything, and it gets, like, too crowded, and I'm, like, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't push me, don't touch me, I'm too close. I'm three feet away, but I'm too close. Did you hear about someone who fell on what? the tracks? Yeah. When? On the Victoria Line. It was like just last week. No. shut down for a while. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just worried. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's Halloween. It's supposed to be spooky. Uh, okay. Pushing a young college student near the edge of the platform. He struggled to keep his footing and stumbled onto the tracks as he lost his balance. No! Edwin, having witnessed this from the corner of his eye, yelled at the conductor to stop the train, but the man was... That's Are you outside the train? <laughs> <laughs> Are you not outside the... Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. It's optimistic. <laughs> He yelled at the conductor to stop the train, but the man was unable to hear him over all the frantic noise and the fact that you're outside of the train. There is a whole train between you and the conductor. Huh. And it was already too late for him to do so. The train began to move and towards the young man who was now trapped between the carts. None of that makes sense, but okay. <laughs> After waiting for certain doom, as the wheels began to turn before him, the man closed his eyes before suddenly being lifted and helped off the tracks quickly. Unnecessary quickly, but okay. <laughs> the scholar recognized Edwin and called him out by name as he was lifted from the train tracks, the carts passing by as he was saved from death, lifted by the collar of his shirt. They looked at each other briefly, silent, before the schoolboy thanked him. After saving his life... If he's a college student, I don't think he's considered a schoolboy yeah, anymore. that's confusing. It's, he's a little old for that <laughs> at that point. After saving his life after a quiet moment, 
Edwin introduced himself to the boy, who in turn revealed that his name was Robert. I, they would never see each other again. Then it's unimportant. In a manner of a few weeks after the incident, the president of the United States <clears throat> was murdered in the White House. Oh, in an event that shocked the world and nation. The actor was the brother of John Wilkes Booth, who was, oh, who assassinated the student's father, Abraham Lincoln. What? I don't get it. Did I miss something? Okay, so the the guy that was that fell into the train tracks is Robert Lincoln, oldest and only surviving son of Abraham Lincoln, who was, to be quite honest, a dick to his mother. My mom used to be obsessed with Mary Todd Lincoln. Oh, okay. So I know a lot. <laughs> um, and then the uh, Edwin is John Wilkes Booth's brother. Oh, 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 oh I got you. Okay, interesting. Tying a little, a little history into it. I don't know how I feel about that. About the, the home. Because, like, it wasn't... I feel like the ending was just like a... Mm, you're just going to sprinkle that in. Because, like, you need to be invested, and I know you're not. Because, like, you're right. I'm not. I don't care. <sighs> but it was okay. Yeah, I felt like it kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it wasn't creepy. No, like it I wasn't. wasn't. It's not what I wanted from no, a pasta. No, it's not really a Halloween. Yeah, I feel like it's not very Halloween. <laughs> I okay. So this next one is abandoned by Disney. I thought that sounded. Oh, fun. okay, cool. Uh, posted May twentieth, two thousand thirteen, by Ed. Okay. Just Ed. Uh, and this is the best one, apparently, that we're going to read. Okay. So, <laughs> if it sucks. <laughs> Great. Some of you may have heard that the Disney Corporation is responsible for at least one real live ghost town. Disney built the Treasure Island Resort in Bakers Bay in the Bahamas. It didn't start as a ghost town. Okay, I said this in the last episode, so, like, anyone who's already listened to it is going to be tired of me saying probably. But, like, I hate exclamation points. You do? I do. <laughs> it's so dumb. But, like, I hate, because I always read it in, like, the mmm voice. Like, <laughs> it didn't start as a ghost town. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. I, Good to know. I, I only use exclamation points in, like, when I'm texting people. I was going to say, I texted some exclamation points. Yeah, no, like, that, no, 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 that. that's fine. Like, I'll use it for excitement. <laughs> it's, like, but, like, in something like this, in, like, actual writing, I hate using okay. them. Sometimes you have to, and it's, like, whatever. But I don't like it. Because gotcha. I always read it in that voice. And I'm, like, what? <laughs> it doesn't fit. It does not fit the mood they're going for. And I'm, like, all right. <laughs> Anyway, it didn't start as a ghost town. <laughs> Disney's cruise ships would actually stop at the resort and leave tourists there to relax in luxury. That This is a fact. Look it up. It is a fact. I've been on a Disney cruise. So, like, <laughs> Disney Blue... <laughs> I just like that, it, that it's in all caps. This is a fact. Look it up. It's like his own paragraph. Like, okay, buddy, it's fine. <laughs> Disney blew $30 million on the place. Yes, $30 million. <laughs> then they abandoned it. Disney blamed the shallow waters, too shallow for their ships to safely operate. And there was even blame cast on the workers. That isn't a well-worded sentence, but yeah. okay. Saying that since they were from the Bahamas, they were too lazy to work a regular schedule. That's not... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's where the factual nature of their story ends. It wasn't because of sand, and it obviously wasn't because foreigners are lazy. Both are convenient excuses. And racist, but okay. (laughs) No, I sincerely doubt those reasons were legitimate. Why don't I buy the official story? Because of Mowgli's place. Okay. (laughs) Tell me about Mowgli's place. Like... (laughs) Near, uh, near the beach side of Emerald Isle in North Carolina, Disney began construction of Mowgli's, oh, Mowgli's Palace excuse me, in the late 1990s. The concept was a jungle-themed resort with a large, you guessed it, palace in the center of the whole thing. If you're unfamiliar with the character of Mowgli, then you might better remember the story The Jungle Book. 
if I'm unfamiliar with the character, Mowgli, <laughs> why would I remember the Jungle Book? Like, he's the protagonist right. of the Jungle Book. That's a good point. <sighs> God, I hate this. If you haven't seen it anywhere else, you'd know it is the Disney cartoon from decades past. Mowgli is an abandoned child in the jungle, essentially raised by animals and simultaneously threatened slash pursued by other animals. Mowgli's Palace was a controversial undertaking from the start. Disney bought up a ton of high-priced land for the project, and there was actually a scandal surrounding some of the purchases. The local government claimed eminent domain on people's homes, then turned around and sold the properties to Disney. At one point, a home that had just been constructed was immediately condemned with little to no explanation. The land grabbed by the government was supposedly for some fictional highway project. Knowing full well what was going on, people started calling it Mickey Mouse Highway. Okay. <laughs> Then there was the concept art. A group of stuffed shirts from Disney Co. actually held a city meeting. They intended to sell everyone on how lucrative this project was going to be for everyone. When they showed the concept art, this gigantic Indian palace surrounded by jungle, <laughs> staffed with men and women in loincloths and tribal gear. That's not Disney appropriate. No. That's not in any way Disney appropriate. No. Like, the Tarzan face character has to wear a full body suit. Like, yeah, that's true. Honey. Well, suffice to say, everyone flipped their shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're talking about a large Indian palace, jungle, and loincloths, all capitalized, by the way, not only in the center of a relatively wealthy area, but also a somewhat xenophobic area of the southern USA. Oh, you mean America? <laughs> I mean, like, this is older than Trump, but, like... Yeah still. It was a questionable mix at that point in history. One member of the crowd tried to storm the stage, but he was quickly subdued by security after he managed to break one of the presentation boards over his knee. Okay. Disney took that community and essentially broke it over its knee as well. Ha ha. The houses were raised, the land was cleared, and there wasn't a damn thing anyone could do, is, do or say about it. Local TV and newspapers were against the resort at the beginning, but some insane connection between Disney's media holdings and the local venues came into play and their opinions turned on a dime. So anyway, Treasure Island, the Bahamas. Disney sunk those millions in and then split. The same thing happened with Mowgli's Palace. Construction was complete. Visitors actually stayed at the resort. The surrounding communities were flooded with traffic and the usual annoyances associated with an influx of lost and irate tourists. Then it all just stopped. Disney shut it down and nobody knew what the hell to think, but they were pretty happy about it. Okay, then, like, <laughs> Disney's last was pretty hilarious and wonderful to a large group of folks who didn't want this in the first place. I honestly didn't give the place another thought since hearing it closed over a decade ago. I lived maybe four hours from Emerald Isle, so really I only heard the rumblings and didn't experience any of it firsthand. Then I read this article with, from someone who had explored the Treasure Island Resort and posted a whole blog about all the crazy shit he found there. I've seen this, actually. I, like, got into, like, one of those obsessive little holes where, like, I was just like, Disney conspiracies, let's go! Um, so I've seen this blog post. Okay. Was it Ooh. as crazy as she says it was? I mean, like, it's not crazy, it's just, like, overgrown. Okay. And it's, like, mm, wild that they just, like, left all this shit there. Yeah. But other than that, it's, like, you know, abandoned. <laughs> Woo! <Okay. laughs> it's, like, not... It's not what I'm expecting to get out of a creepy pasta because I'm like expecting it to get hella creepy, but like it might not considering the last one. Okay. Um, I lost my got it. Whole blog about all the crazy shit he found there. Stuff just left behind. Things smashed, defaced, probably ruined by the disgruntled former employees who had lost their jobs. Hell, the locals from all around probably had a hand in wrecking that place. People there felt just as angry about Treasure Island as folks here did about Mowgli's Palace. Plus, there were rumors that Disney had released their aquarium stock into the local waters when they closed, including sharks. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to take a few? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to take a few swings at some merchandise after that? Well, what I'm getting at is that this blog about Treasure Island got me thinking. Even though many years has passed since its closing, I figured it might be cool to do some urban exploration at Mowgli's Palace, take some photos, write about my experience, and probably see if there was anything I could take home as a memento. I'm not going to say I wasted no time in getting there, because honestly, it took me another year after I first found that Treasure Island article to get around to going up to Emerald Isle. 
Over the course of that year, I did a lot of research on the Palace Resort, or rather, I tried to. Naturally, no official Disney site or resource made any mention of the place. They had been scrubbed clean. Even odder, however, was that nobody before myself had apparently thought to blog about the place or even post a photo. None of the local TV or newspaper sites had one word about the place, though that was to be expected since they had all swung Disney's way. They wouldn't be out there lauding their embarrassment, you know. Recently, I learned that corporations can actually, ugh, can actually ask Google, for example, to remove links from search results, basically for no good reason. Looking back, it's probably not that nobody spoke of the resort, but rather their words were made inaccessible. So in the end, I could barely find the place. All I had to go on was an old-as-hell map I'd received in the mail back in the 90s. It was a promotional item sent out to people who had recently been to Disney World, and I guess since I had been there in the late 80s, that was recent. I mean, sure. <laughs> Depending on, like, when in the 80s and when in the 90s, like... <laughs> they're pretty close together, like... <laughs> I didn't really intend to hang on to it. Then why did you? <laughs> you just get shoved in with my books and comics from my childhood. I'd only remembered it months into my research. And even then, it took me another few weeks to locate the storage bin my parents had shoved it all into. But I did find it. Locals were no help, as most were transplants who had moved to the beach in recent years. Or old residents who just sneered at me and made rude gestures the second I managed to say where I, would I find Mowgli's... Bleh. So, like, you're like, hey, do you know anything about Mowgli? And they just flip you off, like, who, why, what? <laughs> the drive took me through an inordinately long corridor of overgrowth. Tropical plants that had run rampant and overpopulated the area mixed with the native species of flora that actually belonged there and had tried to reclaim the land. I was in awe when I reached the front gates of the resort. Tremendous, monolithic wooden gates whose supports to either side looked like they must have been cut from giant sequoias. The gate itself had been gouged in several places by woodpeckers and eaten away at the base by burrowing insects. Hanging on the gate was a sheet of metal, some random scrap with hand-painted letters scrawled in black. Abandoned by Disney. I highly doubt. It's funny you need a sign to say <laughs> Highly <laughs> down. If they're like, I mean, maybe because it's hand painted, like someone else did yeah. it. But like, <laughs> if no one's gonna go there for all these years, why would like someone just abandoned by <laughs> Disney? Clearly, the handiwork of some past local or an employee who wanted to make some small protest. I'll take an employee doing sure. it. I'll take that. Nothing else, though. <laughs> the gates were open enough to walk through, but not drive, so grabbing my digital camera and the map, whose flip side showed a layout of the resort, how convenient, I set off on foot. The inner grounds of the place were just as overgrown as the entryway. Palm trees stood untended and ragged among piles of their own coconuts. Banana plants similarly stood in their own striking bug-riddled refuse. There was this sort of clash between order and chaos, as carefully planted rows of perennial flowers mixed with obnoxious tall weeds and stinking blackened mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> There's not, like, a complete sentence. There's, like, no actual verb in there. <laughs> okay. All that remained of any outdoor structures were broken, rotting wood and various charred bits of unidentifiable material. Why are they charred? Did someone set fire to this place? Yeah. What was most likely an information booth or an outdoor bar was now simply a pile of assorted debris chopped up by past vandalism and ravaged by weather. The most interesting thing on the grounds was a statue of Baloo, the friendly bear from the Jungle Book, which stood in a sort of courtyard in front of the main building. He was frozen in a jovial wave toward no one, staring into empty space with a silly, toothy grin as bird shit covered whole swaths of his fur and vines ensnared his platform. Aww. So, like, a statue. <laughs> exactly what you described, and then you tried to make it worse, but it's a statue staring into empty space. It's a statue! <laughs> okay. Okay. I approached the main building. The palace! Why is that in all caps? Only to find the outside of the building covered in graffiti where the original paint had pe hadn't peeled and chipped away. 
The front doors weren't just open. They had been taken off their hinges and were stolen. Who steals a door? (laughs) Of all the things in this place to take, you're going to steal a whole door. That's true. Oh, my God. Above the front doors or the gaping maw where they had been, someone had once again painted, Abandoned by Disney! (laughs) There's a theme. (laughs) I wish I could tell you about all the awesome stuff I saw inside the palace. Forgotten statues, abandoned cash registers. You consider that awesome? Okay. (laughs) A full-fledged secret society of homeless bums, but no. The inside of the building was so stark, so bare, that I actually think people had stolen them molding off the walls. Anything that was too big to steal, counters, desks, giant, fake trees... They were all resting amid this empty echo chamber that amplified my every step like a slow rat-a-tat of a machine gun. That's wow. not the sound that makes. <laughs> if I hear rat-a-tat, I'm like, oh, little drummer boy. Not a machine gun. <laughs> and I checked the floor pan and headed to all the locations that might seem in any way interesting. The kitchen was as you'd imagine, an industrial food prep area with all the appliances and space, no expenses spared. Every glass surface was broken, every door knocked off its hinges, every metal surface kicked and dented. The entire place smelled like very old piss. Okay. (laughs) The huge freezer, (laughs) not even remotely cool now. Obviously, it's been years. There's no electricity. Why would it still be cool? had row upon row of empty shelf space. Obviously! (laughs) Hooks hung from the ceiling, probably for hanging cuts of meat, and as I stood inside for a moment, I noticed they were swigging. Oh, okay. Each uh, Each hook swung in a random direction, but their movements were so slow and small that it was almost impossible to see. I figured it had been caused by my footsteps. What? So I stopped one from swinging by clutching it in my fist, then carefully letting go, but within seconds, it started to swing once more. The bathrooms were in much the same state as the rest of the place, just like Treasure Island Resort. Someone had methodically smashed each porcelain commode with coconuts and other implements. I don't think a coconut is strong enough to break a toilet. Yeah, that seems unlikely. It's a coconut. (laughs) The toilet would break the coconut. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying that that seems a little inaccurate. There was about half in, a half inch of rancid, stinking, stagnant water on the floor, so I didn't stay there very long. Okay. What's odd is that the toilets and the sinks and the bidets in the ladies' room. Yes, I went there. I, okay. <laughs> I don't care. All dripped, leaked, or just ran freely. Also, why did the ladies get the bidet, but not the men? It seems sexist. Gender roles. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All dripped, leaked, or just ran freely. It seemed to me that they should have shut the water off long, long ago. I'm sure they did, but like... There were plenty of rooms in the resort, but naturally I didn't have time to look through them all. The few I did peer into were similarly wrecked, and I didn't expect to find anything there. I thought there was actually a television or radio in one room, as I really think I heard a quiet conversation coming out. Though it was like a whisper, probably my own breathing echoing in the silence, or just another case of the sound of flowing water playing tricks on the mind. This is what it sounded like. I didn't believe it. Short, unknown reply. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Your father told you. Unknown reply, or possibly just weeping. Wow, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I know, I know, that sounds ridiculous. I'm just telling you what I experienced, why I thought there might have been something running in that room, or where some vagrants could hold up there, and probably would have knifed me. That's not a verb, but okay. (laughs) At the front doors of the palace again, I figured I hadn't found anything of note and had wasted the trip up. As I looked out the door, I noticed something interesting in the courtyard that I had apparently missed. Something that would give me at least one thing to show for all my trouble, even if it was just a photograph. There's a lifelike statue of a python, maybe 80 feet long, coiled up and sunning itself on a pedestal right in the center of the area. It was almost time for the sun to start setting, so the light fell onto the object in the perfect way for a photograph. <laughs> I approached the python. Is it a real python? 
I approached the python and snapped a photo. Then I stood on my toes and snapped another. I moved closer again to get detail of its face. Slowly, casually, the python lifted its head, looked directly into my eyes, turned and slithered slithered off the pedestal across the grass and into the trees. That was anticlimactic. I'm disappointed. (laughs) Like, I guess... I get they wouldn't be here to tell the story, but, like, still. So. All 80 feet of it. Its head long disappeared into the woods before its tail even left the sunning spot. Well, yeah, it's an 80-foot-long python. <laughs> Duh! Disney had released all their exotic animals onto the grounds. Right there on my floor plan <sighs> map was the reptile house. I should have known. <laughs> Okay. I'd read about the sharks at Treasure Isle, and I should have known they'd done this. I was dumbfounded, just utterly stupefied. My mouth must have been hanging open for the longest time before I came back down to earth and snapped it shut. I blinked... (laughs) hate that sentence. I blinked a few times and backed away from where the snake had been back toward the palace. Even though it was totally gone, I still wasn't taking any chances and backed my way into the building. What if there's something behind you? It took a few deep breaths and I t- it took a few deep breaths and slaps to my own face to get myself right in the head again after that. Okay. I looked for a place to sit down as my legs were feeling a bit like jelly at this point. Of course there was no place to sit down unless I wanted to recline in the broken glass and dead leaf carpet or haul myself up onto a desk of questionably re- reliability that that should be questionable reliability but mm. okay. I had seen some stairs near the palace's lobby and decided to go have a seat there until I felt better. But what's on the stairs? <laughs> the staircase was far enough away from the front of the building to be relatively clean, doubt it, save for a startling accum- Startling? It's been years! <laughs> Accumulation of dust. I pulled a wedge of metal off the... Okay. I pulled a wedge of... It- Wow. I pulled a wedge of metal off the wall, once again painted with the Abandoned by Disney (laughs) motto I'd become accustomed to. You've seen it three times. You can't... (laughs) I placed the wedge on the stairs and sat on it to keep at least somewhat clean. Because that's going to be cleaner. Okay. The stairway led downward, below ground level. Using my camera flash as a sort of improvised flashlight, I could see that the staircase ended in a metal mesh door with a padlock, a sign in the door, a real sign, read mascots only, thank you. This perked up my spirits a little bit for two reasons. One, a mascots only area would have definitely had some interesting stuff back in the day. Two, the padlock was still in place. Nobody had gone down there. Not the vandals, not the looters. Nobody. <laughs> Watch there be like a million dead bodies. Um This was the only this was the one place I could actually explore in quotation marks for some reason. And perhaps find something interesting to photograph or wantonly steal. Wantonly steal, whatever. I hate that word. I just I don't like pronouncing it. <laughs> I had come to the palace essentially agreeing with myself that it was okay to take anything I wanted because hey, abandoned. Again, in quotation marks, it is literally <laughs> abandoned by Disney! Like, what? It didn't take much to bust the lock. Well, actually, that's wrong. It didn't take much to bust the metal plate on the wall that had the pad lo- that the padlock was hooked, up- hooked to. God. Time and decay had done most of the work for me, and I was able to bend the metal plate enough to pull the screws out of the wall. Wow. Something nobody else had apparently thought of or hadn't been able to do at the time. The mascot's only area was a startling and very welcome change from the rest of the building I'd seen. For one, every second or third fluorescent light overhead was illuminated. Why? Why would there still be electricity yeah. going to this building? It's haunted with electricity. Ooh. <laughs> um, every second or third fluorescent light overhead was illuminated, even though they flickered and faded randomly. Also, nothing had been stolen or broken, even if age and exposure were definitely taking their toll. Tables had notes, pad- notepads and pens. There were clocks, even a punching clock on the wall, complete with filled-out time cards. Chairs were scattered around, and there was even a small break room with an old static-filled television and long, rotted-out food and drink on the counters. You wouldn't take that out when you abandoned this building. You wouldn't... (laughs) 
It was like one of those post-apocalypse movies where everything is left in the state of evacuation. As I walked the maze-like sub-basement hallways of the mascots-only area, the sights just became more and more interesting. As I went further, desks and tables were knocked over, papers scattered and almost melded with the damp floor, and a large carpet of mold was slowly overtaking the real rotting crimson floor covering. Everything was just sort of squishy. Again, in quotation marks, unnecessarily. Anything would disintegrate it into mush when I applied even the least amount of force, and clothing items hanging on hooks in one of the rooms simply fell to moist threads if I tried to unhook them. Ew. One thing that annoyed me was that the light was becoming more sparse and unreliable as I went further into the dank, suffocating depths of the place. You can't be... You can't ask for too much when you're in an abandoned building. <laughs> like, it's unfair to let that annoy you. <laughs> I'm in an abandoned building that shouldn't have electricity. Where are the lights? <laughs> Eventually, I reached a black and yellow striped door with the words Character Prep 1 stenciled on it. The door wouldn't open at first. I figured this was probably where the costumes were kept, and I definitely... Yeah, okay. Uh, wanted a photograph of that twisted, stinking mess. Try as I might, whatever angle or trick I tried, the door wouldn't budge. That is, until I gave up and started to walk away. That was when there was a slight popping sound and the door creaked open slightly. I would be out of there so fast. Yeah. Like, I'm giving up on this door. And then it (laughs) opens? No! (laughs) Inside the room... Oh, inside. The room was completely dark. Pitch black. I used the camera flash to look for a light switch in the wall by the door, but there was nothing. As I made my search, I was jarred out of my sense of excitement by a loud electrical buzz that shouldn't be there! It's been abandoned for decades! (laughs) Rows of lights overhead suddenly flashed to life, flickering and fading in and out like the rest I had passed. It took a second for my eyes to adjust, and it seemed like the light was going to just keep getting brighter until all the bulbs exploded. But just when I thought it would reach that critical stage, the lights dimmed a bit and steadied. The room was exactly as I had pictured it. Various Disney costumes hung on the walls, fully put together like strange cartoon cadavers hung from invisible nooses. Oh. (laughs) There was an entire rack of loincloths and native clothes on hangers towards the back. What I found odd, and what I wanted to photograph right away, was a Mickey Mouse costume at the center of the room. Unlike the other costumes, it was lying on his back in the center of the floor like a murder victim. The fur on the costume was rotten and shedding, creating bare patches. What was even odder, however, was the coloring of the costume. It was like a photo negative of the actual Mickey Mouse, black where he should be white and white where he should be black, His normally red overalls were light blue. This sight was off-putting enough that I actually put off photographing the thing until last. I took a picture of the costumes hanging on the walls. Upward angles, downward angles, side shots to show the entire row of frozen, putrid cartoon faces, some with plastic eyes missing. Then I decided to stage a shot. Just one of the bedraggled character heads on this slick, grimy floor. I reached for the headpiece of a Donald Duck costume and carefully removed it so the thing wouldn't fall apart in my hands. As I looked into the face of the wide-eyed, moldering head, a loud, clattering sound made me jump with fright. (laughs) I looked looked down at my feet, and there between my shoes was a human skull. It had fallen out of the mascot head and shattered into pieces at me feet. At me feet. (laughs) God, I love typos. (laughs) Only the empty face and lower jaw remained staring up at me. Oh my god. So like this, the whole skull. That, that, that is what a skull is. Yeah. <laughs> I, dropped the duck, I dropped the duck head immediately as you'd expect and moved for the door. As I stood in the doorway, I looked back to the skull on the floor. I had to take a picture of it, you know. I had to. <laughs> of course you did. You don't need to run. For any number of reasons that might seem, that may seem silly, but only if you don't think it through. I need proof of what happened, especially if Disney was going to somehow make this go away. I, and you're thinking through this after a human skull falls out of a Donald Duck costume no, that you described as hanging up like from a noose? <laughs> My guy. <sighs> I had no doubt in my mind, right from the start, that even if it was just gross negligence, Disney was responsible for this. That's when Mickey, that photo-negative opposite Mickey in the middle of the floor, started to get up. First sitting up, then climbing to its feet, the Mickey Mouse costume, or whoever was inside of it, stood there at the center of the room, its fake face just staring quick directly at me as I mumbled, No, 
over and over and over. With shaking hands, a violently thrashing heart, and legs that had once again turned to jelly, I managed to lift the camera and, and aim it at the opposite creature now quietly sizing me up. The digital camera screen displayed only dead pixels in the shape of the thing. It was a perfect silhouette of the Mickey costume. As the camera moved in my unsteady hands, the dead pixels spread, marring the screen wherever Mickey's outline moved to. Then the camera died, went blank and quiet and broken. I raised my eyes once again to the Mickey Mouse costume. Hey, it said in a hushed, perverted, oh but perfectly gosh. executed Mickey Mouse voice. I can't do a Mickey Mouse voice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see my head come off? No! Oh it started to God. pull in its own head, working its clumsy, glove-clad fingers around its neck with clawing, impatient movements similar to a wounded man trying to pull himself free of a predator's jaws. Throwback to last year, I'm wounded! <laughs> As it worked its digits into its neck, so much blood, so much, ew, thick, chunky, yellow blood. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so gross. I turned away as I heard a sickening tearing of cloth and flesh. Ugh. Only cared about getting away. Me too. Um, <laughs> above the doorway out of this room, I saw the final message clawed into the metal with bone or fingernails. Abandoned by God! I never got the pictures out of the camera. I never wrote the blog entry about it. After I ran from that place, fled for my sanity, if not my very life, I knew why Disney didn't want anyone to know about this place. They didn't want anyone like me getting in. They didn't want anything like that getting out. Nice. Oh, original author, Slime Beast. I'm mm. sorry, Slime Beast, that Ed tried to take credit <laughs> for your work. Um. Wow. Wow. Well, that was very drawn out. Yeah. Like, I feel like we didn't need a good half of that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> good. Escalated. Creepy. Yeah. I like the escalation. That was, uh, well done. Okay, I get it. The first comment, um, not the most recent, but the first comment with the most votes or whatever. I don't know how this website works. This was awesome. Very good pasta. 10 out of 10. Would eat again. And, like, I get it the pasta reference, mm -hmm. but, like, we just read a thing, and I'm like, would eat again, and now I'm thinking of, like, what was Mickey planning to do? <laughs> what would happen? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next one. <laughs> this is a short one compared to the long one that, okay. was, that we just read. Um, posted 10th March 2015 by Zerif underscore zero. It's called Knock Knock. Mm -hmm. Who's there? <laughs> The digital clock read 3.15 a.m. I was lying awake, restless in my bed. There was nothing I disliked more than a long, dreary, and silent night. I sighed, recalling that the nights prior to this one shared a common dullness. I adjusted the sheets in an attempt to cover my exposed feet from the biting cold that the night brought with it, and the demon under your bed. Everything was pretty mundane until I heard a knock in my room. Knock, knock. I turned over to face the window opposite to the door. Nothing. Knock, knock. It sounded again. It came from the door. Without thinking, I said, Go back to bed, Johnny. There are no monsters in your room. Who's Johnny? Who are you? Yeah. I sighed due to the fact that my younger brother was subject okay. to nightmares. Okay. That was my guess. I, <laughs> <laughs> I usually... Usually I don't get answers that quickly. And something happened in the last episode that... Like, I was like, what is this? And I was like, it's this. And I was like, oh, I'm right. <laughs> I sighed due to the fact that my younger uh, brother was subject to nightmares. Knock, knock. At this point, I began to grow infuriated with Johnny's antics. I got up from bed and sauntered towards Johnny's rooms, he is more than one, with gritted teeth. It sounds harsh, but for goodness sake, it was well past three in the morning. Well, it's 15 minutes past three in the morning, but like, I get you. <laughs> and I was trying to get some sleep. I approached his door and pushed it open with a slight creak coming from its hinges. I peeked in the resulting crack, only to find, to my surprise, Johnny still sleeping. It can't be, I thought to myself. If it's not him, then who could be knocking on my door? Getting a little scared, I walked back to my room and dragged myself back into bed. I'd be running, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I gave the concept some more thought, but tiredness took over. As I began to nod off, I heard a rapping on the door. Knock, knock. At this point... I broke out into a cold sweat, immediately used cold sweat, okay, <laughs> and began to think, what was it that Johnny was so scared of? 
Monsters? It couldn't be. There are no such thing as monsters. Knock, knock, the door sounded. This round of knocking was more intense than the rounds before. As the rounds of knocking continued, growing more intense, I hurled up into a ball. I feel like that could have been done in, like, one sentence, but mm -hmm. okay. I shut my eyes, waiting for the dreaded knocking to cease. Knock, knock. I was at the verge of tears, praying to whatever was out there to stop the knocking. The knocks grew more consistent, like a heartbeat. Like my heartbeat. What? <sighs> the knocking stopped with the onset of this realization. Ooh, creepy. My heart almost gave out in the suspense. There is no such thing as monsters, I kept repeating to myself. I tried to psych myself up to look at the door, but my body wouldn't listen. After five painfully silent minutes, I slowly brought my head to face the door. I forced my eyelids open, only to be greeted by a demonic smile with jagged teeth and bloodshot mm. eyes. My heart stopped because at that moment, I realized the knocking wasn't coming from the outside, but rather from inside my very own room. Oh my. All right, that was that was okay. It was okay. Yeah, I I like the other one better. The yeah, last definitely. One, but that was okay. Yeah, definitely better than the first one. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't even remember the first one at this point, except that it was stupid. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Um, that was cool. That was my first venture into creepy pasta. Thank you for jumping into yeah. the dark hole with me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, <laughs> and thank you again for agreeing to uh, do this podcast yeah, with me. Yeah, absolutely. Also, my first podcast. <laughs> Yay! So many adventures. <laughs> Teresita, what did you think? It was really good. Yay! I like the second one. Yeah. Yeah. Objectively, the best one, which is why it did have the highest rating, but. Mm -hmm. I think it went in the, uh, I agree with the ratings that uh, Creepypasta gave them, because this was the uh, second highest, and the first one we did was the lowest. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, I always forget what I say at the end of my things. Um, if you like my things, uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, and I guess Goodreads at Legends of Mia. Uh, if you want to email me, um, questions or your own work, because, like, you could appear on this podcast. What? Legendsofmia at gmail.com. Also, that's all in the description, so there you go. Um, do you have any social media or anything you want to promote? Um, I don't really use a lot of social media. That's okay. I have a Facebook page. That's okay. <laughs> Teresita, yeah. you got anything? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Alright. Well, if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. What? Also, comment below. What did you think of these po podcasts? What are these called? Creepy pastas. <laughs> um, and... Uh, like, if you're having a good Halloween, or if you're having a bad Halloween, tell me about your Halloween in the comments. Bye!